<laughs> but yeah, man, on that note, I don't really have a lot to say other than enjoy the Labor Day weekend. If you're listening to this, you know, on the weekend, if not, hope you enjoyed your Labor Day weekend and go ahead and go to touchdownsandtangents.com. Check out all of our content. We're going to have more content coming up. Just keep growing. Keep getting better. And speaking of that, if you didn't get the chance to watch the Travis Scott documentary, you should definitely watch it. Now, I myself at first was a little skeptical just because, you know, Travis over the past year hasn't gotten the best rep, especially since doing the Super Bowl. But not to mention, you know, He's married to a, a Car- Kardashian, uh, or he's fucking with he's Car he's Kardashian adjacent. No, he has a daughter. Like, yeah, he's Kardashian adjacent. He's in there, in there. And he's Kanye adjacent. So again, problematic. Is he still Kanye adjacent? So all that combined, you know, Netflix cloud. It's kind of like, uh, do I want to watch this? Is it just gonna be some nasty cloud chasing ass shit? And to be honest, I wasn't really going to watch it, but I was bored and I was like, uh, let me check it out. The first probably about 15 minutes was fucking amazing, honestly. Like, just the background music he used using the original tracks from Days Before Rodeo, you know, showing con- concert footage from the rodeos he used to perform and from all these small venues where he came up, where people would just literally rush the stage when he'd tell, like, security, hey, security, you know, Travis Scott fans don't kick get kicked out, and he'd literally take kids getting kicked out and bring them on stage, or like, you know, just seeing all these people jump the fences in VIP, and Travis is like, "Hey, security, don't stop them." Like, honestly, man, I really cried only only because it gave me the exact opposite of whatever PTSD is, and it just like took me back to a much happier time, much simpler time, you know, just enjoying my friends. Enjoying some great music, just jumping around, being stupid, getting crazy, letting some adrenaline flow, some maybe some toxic masculinity if it was a season. But just seeing that and realizing like how many great, like really lifelong memories and friends I've made thanks to Travis Scott's performances and music. And that just kind of hit me and I was just like, wow. And then really seeing his process, because it's really about his ascension from like somebody, you know, who's known as a producer and live actor, live performer to really a superstar. And so it really focuses on him building Astroworld, him having a baby, him doing the Super Bowl, him not winning a Grammy, him winning a Grammy, like those big life events. But seeing him kind of maintain his process throughout that, like, you know, Listening to tracks in the car, driving or driving through Houston or, you know, hot boxing with Mike Dean and producers and listening to it or, you know, just listening to tracks and listening to features and just bouncing around like the kids at a show, like seeing him cut albums on just a laptop or putting his head under a blanket so he can get better sound, like just in a home studio, like seeing those parts of his process is like. Like, okay, like, he hasn't switched up too much. Like, he's still there. And then also seeing him try to use his platform to really speak to kids, to really speak to Houston, you know, an area that's been devastated by a lot of natural disasters and poverty and politics and all that sort of stuff. And big oil and big ag. But, yeah, just seeing him try to be someone that can bring the Houston community together. I mean, just seeing Paul Wall on there calling – Calling him, calling Travis his big bro now. Like, he was like, I was his big bro before, but now he's my big bro. And just seeing that, man, it just kind of goes down to exactly what this podcast is like. It's like, you know, sometimes you just have to do it and build it. And even if it's weird and people don't get it at first or whatever, if they do get it and they do love it, you just keep doing it either way and keep doing it your way. And eventually, like, It'll happen. You just have to keep being consistent and keep going at it. Because as crazy and as, you know, unique as Travis's music might sound, it's like 
he's really changed a lot of shit in music culture. Like, beyond people just t- taking his sound, like, you know, he even talked about it. Like, he's changed people's BPMs. You know, he's changed melodies. He's he's influenced a lot of shit. And it's like, this dude literally was six years old rapping. Like, this dude was in the high school group with some other white dude, like, this dude been working for a minute, and just to see him really hit that, it's like, how could I not root for Astro World? How could I not root for Travis Scott? Even as problematic as he might be, and even if it might be my stand or even if it might be propaganda, either way, man, it still made me feel good to be a Travis Scott fan, just to see his art and see the artist behind it all, so... Yeah, man, watch that. Look, Mama, I Can Fly. Check it out. Netflix. Definitely worth the show. You actually weren't muted. Oh, I'm uh, pretty sure I was. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. You were just turned down. Thanks for that. But, uh, yeah, man, so shout out to the Good News Radio Station. Check out the showcase September 14th. Shout out to tickets. X Squad Affiliates, shout out to FPC Radio, shout out to your favorite podcast app where you can find this. We're way over time. So, we're out. We got a loaded show for you next week. Make sure you tune in. It'll be a, and Kobe shot the Lakers out of the finals against the Pistons. It'll be an AFC, NFC West preview week one. I'm serious. You're not going to want to miss it. Regardless of who your team is, you can get some great info. So, peace. Peace.